Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to look at lesson seven five, um, which is properties of logarithms. These are really similar to uh, the properties of exponents, which we already have talked about. The hardest part of the day is going to be um, when you see example one and three coming up with the product quotient um, or power that gives you those answers. And um, otherwise, today is pretty straightforward. You don't need your calculator for anything. We'll always give you an estimate. Um, so let's just dive right into things here. Okay. So looking at properties of logarithms, very similar to properties of exponents. So when we talked about properties of exponents before, when we had something like 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 5th, that was always 2 to the 8th. Okay, so using this mentality, when we have a product of numbers, we added their powers. When we look at logs, very similar idea. When I have a product of a number, what I can do is add their logs separately. Um, and obviously you can see down here, so this would be log base 2 of 30 equals log base 2 of 5 plus log base 2 of 6. <coughs> so as we go through things, this first example, uh, we're looking for a product um, that comes up with the number in each case. So when I'm looking at this, we have log base 4 of 12, and I'm told in the directions log base 3 or log base 4 of 3. So the one we give you is probably something you're going to use. Keep in mind that even though it's not listed, we can use four as well, because log base four of four, four to what power is four? Well, we know that's one, okay? So always keep in mind that we might give you one. There's also going to be some implied ones as well. So log base four of four is one, and log base four of one is zero. Four to the zero is one, okay? So even though those aren't listed, we always can use those. The assumption is that we know those. Um, basically. So first things first, let's take a look. We have log base 4. I'm trying to come up with a product using 1, 4, and 3. Well, obviously with 12, 4 times 3. Now that I have log, or I'm logging a product, what I can do is use my rule. If I'm logging a pro product, like up here, I can take the log of each separately and just like with the powers we're going to add them together well in this case log base 4 of 4 we know is 1 and then log base 4 of 3 is given to us 0.7925 so my final answer is 1.7925 and if you were to check on your calculator 4 to the 1.7925 power is about 12. All right. So that's kind of an easy one to start and just show you how the product um, to some works. Moving right along to the next example, numbers obviously get a smidge trickier as you go through things. So I'm trying to come up with a product sum, um, or I can even use a power to, to come up with things. So log base 4 of Hmm, hmm, hmm. What are we thinking? Well, I know that 81, or no, sorry, not 81. What am I thinking? 64 times 3 is 192. I did the 3 because obviously we have log base 4 of 3. We want to use that in the problem. 192 divided by 3 is 64. Well, some of you might be asking, why the heck would you do 64? Well, I know 4 cubed is 64. So now I have a product. When I break this up, log base 4, you can write 4 cubed or 64. And we have log base 4 of 3. <laughs> then I can break it up. 4 to what power is 64? Well, you know, that's 3. And log base 4 of 3 is 0.7925, as stated in the directions. So we wind up with 3.7925. All right. 
So again, the hardest part of the day is going to be coming up with what's in the parentheses, what product or power um, scenario you're going to have to use to get whatever you're logging. Otherwise, today should be pretty straightforward. Okay. So moving right along, uh, we just explored the product property of logs. So when we have two logs, we uh, our product are logging a product, we can add them together. If we have a quotient, very similar idea, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to subtract them. And that's what's given to you in the box, the general form of the example. So if I'm logging a quotient, I'm going to subtract the two. All right. So in this question, uh, we're looking at the loudness in a basically group of people. So our loudness equals 10. And this is log base 10 of R. R being the sound relative intensity. So it says, suppose one person talks with a relative intensity of 10 to the 6, okay, or 60 decibels. So we're going to kind of use this 10 to the 6th in my question. So at this point, we just need to plug in what we know, okay? We have 10 log base 10 of R. Well, Right now, we're comparing 100 people talking at 60 decibels to one person talking at 60 decibels. So now, if you notice, we have log of a quotient. I, I know when you look at this problem, you see that you can cancel those out, the 10 to the 6, but we're going to use the properties to show you that they actually do, in fact, work. So we wind up with 10 log of basically 10 to the eighth minus log base 10 of 10 to the sixth. And I'm going to put that in parentheses. So we took our quotient here and we broke it up into a difference of the two logs. Okay. So now when we simplify things, we have 10 here out front still. 10 to what power is 10 to the 8th? Well, we know that's got to be 8. And what's uh, log base 10 of 10 to the 6? Well, that should be pretty straightforward. That's 6. 8 minus 6 is 2. 2 times 10 is 20. All right? So the next time your teacher yells at you for being too loud in the classroom, you can say, well, you know, it's not 100 times louder with 100 people in here. It's only 20 times louder. Cool it jets, teacher. So kind of a fun thing to think about. It's not going to be um, as loud, or each person isn't going to add the same intensity. It's going to only be 20 times louder in a group of 100 people. All right? Um, just again, displaying with uh, quotient, we subtract the logs. So we're going to continue on. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. All right. So from here... Um, I want to continue on to example three, looking at the power property. I don't know where my text is going and why it's doing that. <coughs> Whatever, we'll just leave this here. <laughs> All right, so our power property, I don't know what's going on, my apologies here. Uh, power property, really similar to the last question we were just working on here. Um, so as we're going through these, uh, thinking about log base 2 of 25, all right? So we're in log base 2. We're thinking about what's going to work in these situations. So immediately right off the bat, when I'm given this, I'm thinking log base 2 of 25. I'm going to write 25 as a power in terms of 5 since that's what I'm given. Well, I know that's 5 squared. Okay. So with the power property, what happens is our power drops to the front. So we wind up with 2 log base 2 of 5. We can now substitute in the value of log base 2 of 5, which is 2.3219, and we wind up with 4.64. Three, eight, as the approximation. Notice, every single problem we've done today, we have not reached for a calculator to just type it in and use our log base program. That's cheating. Today we want to use our properties 
to approximate what we're given. These types of questions, again, will be on the no calculator portion of your next quiz. You need to be able to come up with these on your own. So thinking about this one, log base 2 of 125, well, we know that 125 is 5 cubed. So just like before, our power comes out front. There's already a 3 there. So 3 times 3 is 9 times log base 2 of 5. Then we substitute in the value, 2.3219 times 9, and we wind up with 20.8. Nine, seven, one. All right. So again, these three problems are going to be the toughest of the day. Just remember, when we have a power, it drops to the front. When we have a quotient, we subtract, and when we have a um, a power, we add the two together. All right. If we continue on to these last examples, just looking at solving using properties really straightforward in terms of things. When you're solving today and you see something like this, a number out front, well, I remember from our last example that a number out front is a power. So you bring that up. On the right hand side, when I'm using my properties, I understand that when I see a sum, I have a product of two numbers. So I'm log base seven of three, times 27, and we wind up with 81. At this point, we're logging the same number, the bases are the same. We know that x squared has to equal 81, so x is going to be plus or minus 9. And as always, we want to check our answers. Negative 9 does not work, because we can't do log base 7 of a negative 9, so we know our only answer is 9. Alright, if we continue on to this next example, very same idea, kind of taking our properties in reverse order. I see a sum of two logs with the same base, so I'm going to put them together using a product. So we wind up with x squared plus 5x equals 2. Notice there's no log on the other side which means I need to use the definition of a log to continue solving. 6 is my base, 2 is my power, and then the x squared my plus 5x is my answer. Notice we have a quadratic expression. We wind up with x squared plus 5x plus, or excuse me, minus 36. You then have the luxury of factoring that. Plus 9 and minus 4, we get our x squared plus 9x minus 4x is 5x, positive 9 and negative 4 is negative 36. We wind up with two answers, negative 9 and 4. We need to check back in the original question. I cannot do log base 6 of a negative 9. That does not work. So negative 9 is not an answer. I will tell you that 4 does work. And there we go. All right, properties of logs, very straightforward in terms of things. Homework's there at the bottom of the page. Best of luck to you.